So today and tomorrow we're going to be working on the 7-2 um, project. Um, it is about angles of elevation and depression. So if you take a look um, at what you see here, let's talk about where we find an angle of elevation versus where we find an angle of depression. So an angle of elevation, um, if we are uh, standing at the ground, and we are looking at the top of a building, the top of a tree, something like that. Um, the angle from the <coughs> ground uh, up to the top, if we measure that angle, that is considered an angle of elevation. Um, we still are assuming we are in a right triangle, so um, this length would be our opposite, this would be our adjacent, and this would be our hypotenuse. Now, it's a little different if we are talking about an angle of depression. So if you are up in an airplane and you look down on something on the ground, that is considered an angle of depression. Whatever you have to lower your head or uh, eyes down to look at whatever it is on the ground, that angle there is an angle of depression. You might notice it is not in our triangle. Unless we build our triangle here, it is not part of our triangle. So some things that people mess up about angle of depression is the same theta angle that would appear right here appears right here. Now you might recall back in geometry, um, if you had two lines that were parallel and you cut it through with a tr transversal, the um, uh, alternate interior angles were congruent. That might be something that kind of remotely makes, uh, makes you remember that fact. So technically, the same angle that you had to drop your head up in the plane to look at a spot on the ground, if a person was standing at that spot, they would have to raise their head the same way. So we can, uh, because of alternate interior angles are congruent, um, we could also draw that same theta down there in the bottom corner. So please remember that. Uh, don't put that angle right there. It doesn't go there. It is outside of our triangle. It is the angle that we had to drop our head down to look at something on the ground. Now that being said, I would like to do a few examples. Our first example says the angle of elevation to the top of the building in New York is found to be nine degrees from the ground. So if we look, sorry about that, if we look at the picture here, this would be nine degrees. And um, we are a distance of one mile out. So uh, we have measured and that's one mile from the base of the building. It says using this information, find the height. So if we draw that over here so we can see the Thing real clearly. This is one mile, which is nine degrees, and this is x. Now we usually don't measure uh, um, the heights of buildings in miles, so let's change this to 5,280 feet. So then we can see how many feet high the building happens to be. Now when we do any type of right triangle uh, trig, we um, need to label our sides so we can decide which part of Sokotoa can we use. This is our opposite. See how it's opposite our angle. This is attached to it and forming our other leg. This is our adjacent. So if we think about our Sokotoa, the one that uses opposite and adjacent is the toa, the tangent. So I know the tangent of my angle is opposite over adjacent. So let's go ahead and um, put those in the correct locations. So I know that the tangent of 9 degrees is x over 5,280. And in order to solve that, remember, whatever is in our denominator, we're going to cross over. So this is going to be the tangent of 9 degrees times 5,280. So some things to keep in mind. Whatever is in our denominator crosses over. 
And because we started on degrees, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So the tangent of 9 times 5,280 is what we're going to do. And it ends up being, now let's round it. Now it didn't specify, so let's go, um, I, I would accept to the nearest uh, foot or to the nearest tenth. Let's go to the nearest tenth. This is 836.3. So there is an example of an angle of elevation. We were below something, we were looking up to it, and tangent is used very often. It's not used all the time, but it is used um, often when doing problems like this. So there's example one. Let's take a look at example two. Example two is a, an example of an angle of depression. It says, from the top of a fire tower, a forest ranger sees his partner on the ground at an angle of depression of 40 degrees. If the tower is 45 feet in height, how far is the partner from the base of the tower to the nearest foot? So you will notice that they have um, labeled everything for us. The tower is 45 feet. We are looking for how far away we are from the forest ranger. And we know we had to drop our head 40 degrees at an angle of depression um, to see the forest ranger. Now, you'll notice we don't have an angle inside the triangle. So we can put it down here in that bottom right uh, corner because of the fact that um, alternate interior angles are congruent. So that's 40 degrees. So if we look at where that angle is sitting, this is opposite. We're looking for the adjacent. Again, we're doing tangent. So I know that the tangent of 40 degrees is opposite over adjacent. Now this time our x is in our denominator. Whatever is in our denominator is the thing that first crosses over. So this time we're going to cross over an x. So the tangent of 40 degrees times x is 45. And now to get rid of that tangent of 40, we have to divide that off. So x is going to be 45 divided by the tangent of 40. So always cross over whatever your thing is. And then that's a multiplication. So what's going to get rid of multiplication? But a division. So 45 divided by the tangent of 40 is approximately 53.6. So the forest ranger is about 53.6 ground feet away from the tower. One little quick way to check your work. This angle is 40, which makes this one 50. 50 is a little bit bigger, obviously, than 40. So this side should be bigger than that side. So it should always go, the one across from the 90 is your biggest. The medium should be your medium side. The smallest angle should be across from your smallest side. So it's a very quick little way to check that it does that. If it does that, you're probably right. Last one kind of the most intricate of all. It says a hiker is 100 feet from the base of a mountain. And we're going to assume this uh, is the base of the mountain. And uh, calculates the angle of elevation to the top of the mountain is 68 degrees. OK, so he's 100 feet away. And this angle is 68. Now, he walks in 40 feet. Okay. If he walks in 40 feet, this is 40, so this would be 60. And the closer angle of elevation now is 77. It says, how high is the mountain? Well, we can either use the outer triangle 
with 168 in x, or we can use the inner triangle. It doesn't matter which, but you figure there are actually two sets of information there. They both are tangent. Let's go with the inside triangle, the smaller one. The tangent of 77 is um, x over 60. So we're going to cross multiply by 60. The tangent of 77 times 60 is x. So x is 260. So the height is 260. So whether you use the 68 and the 100 or you use the 77 and the 60, it should work out the same way both ways. Okay, so um, that being said, let's talk about the actual project and what your role is. First step is to complete the 10 problems that you see here. Problems 1 through 10 are about angles of depression and elevation. We're going to do number 5 together in a moment. We're going to do number 5 together in a moment, but I would like you at this time to copy down the answers. And the reason I want you to copy down the answers is the fact that um, you can only get credit for this if you show all your work and set up each drawing and triangle. So number one is 239 feet. Number two is 24 feet. Number three is 134 miles. Number four is 229 feet. Number five, we're going to do together in just a little bit. It's 66.2 feet. Number six is 300.6 miles. Or is it meters? Meters. 300.6 meters. Number seven is 1.16 miles. No, it is not. I can't even read my own writing. It's 1.16 minutes. You could also put 70 seconds. That also is acceptable. Number eight is 7,588 feet. Number nine is 560 feet. And number 10 is 612 feet. So again, write down all the answers but you're only going to get credit if you actually show all of your work. That means you're going to draw a triangle, you're going to show me the setup, and so on and so forth. You might notice that I have highlighted problems 7, 8, 9, and 10. That's because those are the most difficult. Um, we are going to have a poster component to this, kind of a digital poster. Uh, for 7, 8, 9, and 10, if you do those uh, depicted on your poster, if you pick one of those, you will get uh, some bonus points if it's correct. Okay. So, that being said, what are you going to do? Well, today you're going to do these 10 problems. They are due by midnight tonight. You're going to do these 10 problems. You have the solutions. You have to show me work in order to get the credit. And these problems um, are 10 points. Okay. Now, once you have done these 10 problems, we're going to do five together here in a second. Once you do these 10 problems, then you are going to pick one of these problems and only one of these problems to depict on a digital sort of poster. Now, the most simple type of digital poster you can make is the one like I've done here for uh, example number five. Here's number five. It's in your notes. So I've set up the entire thing. I've showed you what the poster's like. That's why you can't pick number five. I've done it already. But um, that's kind of what I mean by a digital poster. You have shown all your work. You've given it some kind of title. You've drawn something. You'll notice, I, you know, I can't draw. So what did I pick? I picked some little uh, clip arts from the internet. And I did include, you want to include the actual problem itself. If you read, there's a rubric right here. Um, the, there are, are, I'm sorry, it's kind of cut off a little bit, but there are basically um, 
25 points possible. Uh, five points for did you use your time well? Did you use your class time? Did you get it done on time? Graphics, did you make it neat? Did you make an attempt to, to lay it out nicely like I did? Okay, I am no, no artist in any way, shape, or form, but I did my best to make it a nice layout and I thought about those things. Did I have the required elements? Did I have a title? Did I have the word problem restated, a graphic interpretation? I labeled everything and the math is correct. Did I try to make it attractive? And did I try to use some graphics and things that uh, were creative? Okay, I didn't just make a triangle and be done with it. Okay. So you can get 25 points for the digital poster, which you're gonna have time to work on tomorrow. So uh, we're going to do example five right now. So if you could, um, wherever you plan to do these problems, if you could do number five with me, let me kind of cut and paste this problem here. We're going to do number five. And then you'll have the rest of the class to work on. So it says, a backpacker notes that from a certain point on level ground, the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 34 degrees. Okay, so here's the top of the tree. Here's our backpacker. He looks up to the top of the tree and it's 34 degrees. He walks closer by, uh, let's go, that's 50 feet. Let's go 50 feet. So that's 50. He looks up this time, and the angle of elevation is 54 degrees. And they want to know what is the height of the tree. Now, there's some things we have to discuss, but we haven't done a problem like this yet. The last problem that kind of had these nested sort of triangles gave us so much information that we could do the problem. But this one didn't. So we have to add another little variable, let's call it y. We don't know that length. But we're going to be able to find that length using the systems of equations. Now, let's talk about our first triangle. This is opposite. This whole thing is adjacent to that angle 34. So that's still a tangent. So I know that the tangent of 34 is opposite x over the total 50 plus 1. Okay. Now the smaller triangle is much nicer. This is the opposite x, the adjacent y. So I know the tangent of 54 degrees is opposite x over adjacent y. Both of these things have two variables. Two variables are not nice unless we can use both equations to help us China come up with a solution. Now, let's make the tangent of 34 and the tangent of 54 numbers. Let's take it like, we'll go three decimal places. The tangent of 34 is 0 0.67, let's go four places, 6745. Let's take the tangent of 54. 1.3764. Now, if we look at these two equations, usually one is a little bit nicer than the other. This is a much kind of simpler, we don't have this addition in our denominator. So let's cross over that right there. And we know that x is 1.3764. So uh, you might recall in systems of equations, we can substitute that in for x. So let's actually sub substitute that in. So where we see an x, we can replace it with 1.3764y. Now you'll notice in this equation, we currently only have a y. There is no other variable. So it's become much nicer. We only have the variable y. So let's do our trick. Let's cross over that and multiply. So we get 0 
times 50 plus y equals 1.376 for y. Now that's just an equation. It's got some gross decimals, but it's just an equation. What would we do next? We would distribute, right? So let's distribute. So 0.76 Seven, four, five times fifty is thirty-three point seven two five, and then point six seven five a lot. Seven four five. I can't say all those decimals today. And now let's just get the y's to one side and the numbers to the other, so we can subtract this off to the other side. So one point three seven six. 4 minus 0.6745 is that 33.725 equals 0 0.7019. Okay. And now it's just a simple equation. we got to divide that decimal off, and we got it. So 33.725 minus 0 0.7019 is a y value of 33 we're going to see see now why isn't what we needed we needed x but what do we know we know that x is 1.3764 times y so 33 times 1.3764 is 45.52. And I must have done something weird. Let's just, <laughs> let me just look for a minute. Make sure my calculator's on degree. Oh, right this, at this point right here? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Okay. 1.3764 minus 0.6745 is not that. Did I? I didn't. I, this, okay. I, I, I found it. Right here. I didn't do that right. Right here. You're right. Yes. I subtracted that off, I think. <laughs> okay, wait a second. So it's correct up to here. Let's go back. 33.725 divided by 0 0.7019 is, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. You did find it. It's 48 feet. There we go. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then if we substitute in right there, 1.3764 times 48 will be our x. Which is 66.2, or you could just round it to 66. Okay. So uh, most of the time when you have those nested triangles, you're going to do two tangents, um, and you're going to substitute in one information from one into the other. Okay, so that is number five, um, and that is what I've depicted on this poster. You'll see I have the work there, um, and I showed it in a little picture, and I wrote out the problem, and I gave it a title. Those are all the things that you need in order uh, for you to get full credit on your poster. Remember, if you do problems, seven, eight, nine, or ten on your poster because those are more difficult and you get it right, you will get some bonus points, okay? So you have the rest of the class to work on these. You have the answers. You must show me work. Uh, the ten problems are due tonight by midnight. The poster, you'll have time to work on it in class tomorrow, is due tomorrow by midnight. So there you go.